and welcome back to the You Up podcast. I'm Jordana Abraham. And I am Jared Freed. It is so good to be back here with you, Jordana. How are you? What's going on? How you been? Um, I've been good. I have I have some very annoying uh, news to share, which oh, should, no. should be predictable. It should be predictable. Okay, but here is. we go. We did like an hour ha- hang here before I know, taping. I didn't mention I, it. This is like gotcha I'm media. Saving, I'm saving You're it for saving the show. It? Okay. I am going to have to move again. What? <laughs> no, stop it. Stop so, it. Betch is moving company. I, Get him going. I can't Let's... believe that I have Wait, you... to say this again. So we're doing some construction on my house and originally thought we were going to be able to like stay. But it's getting closer to it happening. The castle gets a redo. It, yes. A re- the manor. It's going to be updated for the 21st century. It's going to be a, a real. It's not going to be an Italian villa. Yeah. No, a French. Uh... Chateau. Chateau. No. Yeah. yeah. So I've been I've been behind the scenes trying to plan this this renovation. Um, And I thought we were gonna be able to stay. But it looks like we're gonna have to leave for like six months. Six months. That's how so, that's how big this house is. You guys don't understand. Stop it. Subscribe on YouTube. We gotta get this tour. <laughs> I'll show you the construction. So um, are they doing the horse bound, uh, the horse barn first, oh or the pool house, or the none of that butler shit. cabin? They're, just, they're making the regular house not seem haunted. <laughs> So we're starting with that. I think about your house a lot, actually. <laughs> I have to admit. I mean, I think of the person who originally built it, the, the idea that they were telling friends we're doing a French chateau theme. Yes. A theme Just for come a house. Come see the wallpapers. Come see the wallpapers. Like, I'm sure, like, the friends that were the like, garage Are is you? red. <laughs> Red garage. The red garage. I and then I think about like, oh my god, the the redo. I mean, this is going to be an, a fantastic property, not a home, a property. Okay, <laughs> I'm excited for how I think it's going to turn out very well. But I we weren't anticipating leaving, but they were like, you don't want to get out of here. They're like, you don't want to stay here. My parents the lived in their house in Boca. People while, do it. Yeah, they didn't, don't do it. They, they were. They that's were what like, they were basically saying. Yeah. Is like you're not. You're gonna be miserable. Don't do it. Um, but I'm just like it's. I just look at Mike. And I'm like I can't fucking believe that we're gonna move. Do you twice. Have to move everything out. Do, can you yeah. leave stuff there? No, you got to move it all out. That, wh- this renovation must be. This is gonna. Are well, you putting doing a new the, floor on the floors. It? The floors is what. Oh. The floors is what um, makes. So you where are you gonna to put stuff in storage out. and then take some of it to an apartment or something? I guess. I don't Will you know. come back to the city? Is I there, don't know. Is we're there a thought f- of we're that? figuring it out. We need to find something like month to month because it's not mm-hmm. gonna be the whole year. But I just, I feel like a parody of myself <laughs> that I'm gonna be moving <laughs> twice again this year. Last year I still I looked at Mike in the eyes and I said we are never. Leaving. I love it. <laughs> I'm so happy. Here we are. Moving Roadway again. Roadway movers, get ready yeah. to get that promo I mean, code dusted off. I mean, if you're looking to sponsor my move, I'm 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 an open open book here for anyone looking to to help me it's, out with my move. I will document it. I cannot. No one moves as much as me. This is fucking crazy. No one on earth moves more than the betches. Offices, apartments, homes. Manners, constant, constant. <laughs> it is, I honestly, moving is one of the most awful things that you need to do. Well, so I mean, like, I don't know why I love it. So I must love it so much because I do it all the time. I just don't know how you don't forget all of these. I things. moved three like, times last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, I, twice this year. I can't. Be- <laughs> I can't believe it. It's crazy. And it is five so f- times in two years. That's, that's crazy. That's insane. It's funny to me because I did notice how much you guys moved. It was and before. Before this evening we really started. Picked before up you did five. Yeah. Like I that was something I used to joke about with you about all the betches. Right. And, and now, I was like, I guess we do move a lot. And then it really it became a self fulfilling prophecy. Right. So you haven't decided where you're gonna go. Moving is just so stressful. When do you have to leave by? I think probably like May. Like at latest. Why don't you go to like a beach town? Because Mike needs to be in the office oh. for like four days a week. That would have been fun. It would have been. If yeah. only, you know, I married someone who <laughs> could beach town it. Work from home more. <laughs> would have been nice. Do the city. Come life. back. Come back to. I've been thinking about to it. To Kidland. It's just annoying because the summer is the best time to be in the suburbs. I would have Fair. loved to have gone right. to the city in the winter 
when right, there's to, nothing to do out there. With a little bit of energy and walk the right. streets like, and no, have a coffee. Yeah, I don't want to be it. in the smelly city all summer. No yeah, offense. Yeah, brutal. Um, with us pigs. Right, but I'll have to think <laughs> about it. One bedroom and and and, yeah. and fewer people. <laughs> you eight bedroom people. <laughs> Anyway, I thought you would enjoy. I am uh, so happy and, and upset. I feel for you, but I'm also happy the joke lives on. I mean, it, there must be something like you know what I mean. We're doing to create the situation. I mean, clearly we are, but like I'm so happy you saved this for the show. <laughs> <laughs> we talked for an hour, and then uh, your whole vibe changed when we started the show. I was like, uh oh, what's coming? I was hoping to avoid this conversation. You know, I've been trying to figure out ways to make it work, but I was like. I just don't. I think we're gonna have to leave. I think depression's again. setting in right now. Like I think you're. I think having to deal with this now is a tough spot for you. Yeah. Even by the emails, the tone of the emails. I think people have had it. I I've think. Had. I just think generally, generally have had it. It's yeah. I've had it season. I think. Well, because winter. This is when winter sticks around a little too long. And then the oh rain. Oh my god, it's back. And then What's it's the back you know again. they say? In, they say Indian summer. This is like. Uh, Indian win is that a, is that an appropriate term? I know words? they stop saying. Well, that. what is the new word that means what that means? Which is that summer comes back for like a week and then goes away it's, again. It's hot as fuck. I don't know. <laughs> right. it's, it's cold. It's like that again. with I'm winter. Miserable yeah. season. Yeah. It's just. I don't yeah, know what the term no is. I'm so, I, I don't. I would use a different one if I knew it. Fake spring. Fake spring. We, yeah, yeah. There's no such thing as spring in New England, especially here. More so, uh, there's more of a spring as you go a little bit south here. There's. Such a thing called spring. Yeah. yeah, it's. I mean, it's supposed to snow on Thursday and like be forty three degrees. <laughs> I do think there's a collective feeling of like, what the fuck? Like right. I thought this was over. And and it's hard to just like get out into your vibe of like, especially when it comes to this podcast, like dating relationships. Like, I want the next thing. Let's keep it moving, sister. You know, yeah. like uh, it is the weather version of like, you know. You thought you were in the clear with the person you were dating. <laughs> right. And then, you know, like you see the dating app pop up on their phone or something. And you're right. like, I thought I was like over this phase. I thought I we thought were going we to the were, next yes, step. Yes, I was mentally in the next step. And now you've pulled me back into the reality of the situation. It's, uh, listen, I'm feeling it myself. I'm, I'm like, I don't know. I woke up today. I'm tired. I'm on the road. A lot. We're taping this on a Monday, yeah. a rare Monday taping. That'll, that'll Maybe tell that's you it. Yeah. I haven't been in the gym in a bit. I feel like shit. How do you, I mean, I never see you on a Monday. How do you feel about Mondays? Um, See, I used to, I like them because when you do stand up on the weekends, it kind of feels like the world is rushing and I get to like chill. Okay. So, so it feels like I, your weekend. A little bit, but it, it almost like. Because the weekend I do, here's the problem I'm having generally. Like, I think this is a personal issue I'm having is like, I'm working on the weekend, but it's so meshed in with like personal mm -hmm. that like, I end up doing things to myself that then I get to Monday and I go, take a Monday, you had the weekend working. And it's like, yeah, but you also like went out until one in the morning, right. you know? So it's like, and then you get, I get, I feel guilty. Well, yeah, it's hard. I mean, it must be hard having your your work be on the week. It also just kind of because you go out, it's kind of like you don't really know where the line is between work and fun. Well, I, right? No, yeah. I, I, that's that's exactly the the feeling. So on Mondays, I'm like, I have these like stressful. I should get. I should be doing it this way. I should be right. doing that way. I, I do a lot of like. Monday, new new Monday, new me. Like yeah. it's and it's um like when's the last time you even traveled and didn't do any work, no stand up oh, prep. No I mean, stand up. I, I guess it was my brother's wedding two weeks ago, but right. that was work. Right. You know, like doing a wedding speech. is work yeah. when you're when you're the family of you gotta. And hey, you're also hey, doing hey 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 you know all the small talk. With you're all also these doing idiots. your your content on your phone. Right, and I'm also yeah like so it's and I'm not also like you're like, like completely unplugged. At that I wedding. Know. I know. It's just, I, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling very, uh, like, uh, like your garage with the red paint. Like, <laughs> over it. It's just over it and it's cluttered and it's a mess and I need. Well, you know, it's spring. It's the time of renewal. Yesterday was Easter. Um, right. Which is the. But the even Easter didn't feel Eastery because it wasn't like, usually Easter, the weather's beautiful and it's like, oh my God, we're wearing clothes that like kind of don't fit anymore. Right. I'm sweating and I'm mad at the clothes, but I'm but I'm like at least it's Easter, you know, yeah. and it just it wasn't that it's here in New York City, especially getting back. I was in 
I want to thank Minneapolis and Royal Oak, Michigan. They showed up. Yeah. Great shows. People say hello to you. Hello, hello. back to them. <laughs> um, Minneapolis. Fans of the show. Minneapolis was the great. The Minneapolis, as they said, it, as they called it on Bridesmaids. Oh, really? Uh, Bridesmaids, the movie, is uh, set in Minneapolis. I remember and that this. Was like the, oh, I think that's the only movie I've ever seen set in Minneapolis. <laughs> <laughs> it was Bridesmaids, Mary Tyler Moore, okay. Rhoda. Um, How old are, are all, you? I'm 100. <laughs> Mary Tyler Moore. I used to, I was a big Nick at Night guy. I was too. I was too. You did? Yeah, what was yeah. your favorite Nick at Night show? My favorite weird Nick at like like I think on you wouldn't guess as I really like Taxi. <laughs> taxi? Yeah. Wait, what was the theme song to Taxi? It was weird. It would always like depress me a little bit. It was weird. It was like a little depressing. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it was like a, a one set show, too. They rarely left the taxi depot. They're just in the yeah. And what was the foreign Danny guy? Dan DeVito. Dan yeah, DeVito. Yeah. That is a weird one. Really? Yeah, I weirdly liked that show. And I love Lucy. I love Lucy was like amazing classic show. Yeah. I remember seeing that and like I don't know, having like feeling like such a connection to Lucille Ball. Yeah, I mean that's I mean people would watch I Love Lucy. What a woman. You know, it'd right. be like, you know, everyone was in awe of Lucy. Yeah. And even just that show being so old, like it's still kind of hit. Yeah. As a 11 year old watching Nick at Night. <laughs> I used to love F Troop. I don't even remember that one. F Troop was uh, more towards the zany um, side of things. It was more like a. I, it was Animated, like, no. No, no, no. It was, uh, I think if you bring up F Troop, can we bring up what, what's the premise? I think it was that the Nazi soldiers were like holding POWs. Like Gilligan's Island. A little. It was Gilligan's Ma Island. Mash. It was Mash. Mash. You were up really late. I feel Mash like was, if you got that to Mash. music would depress me too. I'm so confused by the time period you're talking about because this show premiered in 1965 and this was not Nick at Night for me. By the way, none no, of no Nick at Night mentioned. became like my childhood at a certain point. Yeah. Like at a no, certain point, was... it was like Full House and and Step by Step, and you're like, oh, this is not what I remember Nick at night to be. Right. No, it definitely changed. There was like a period of time where they would show like kind of like very adult shows. Oh yeah. yeah no, like they, it, it, they were from like, I love Lucy is from the fifties. They yeah. weren't like, they weren't like new shows. They were like reruns of. It was the time where there wasn't that much TV, you know, right. TV would end at like 11. Yeah. And, and if you were up late, like, you were watching yeah. Nick at night. Well, for the F troop, this is the accidentally heroic and chronically inept Wilton Parmenter is given command of Fort Courage, Kansas, Fort Courage, Kansas, a dumping ground for the army's least useful men at the end of the Civil War. <laughs> end of the Civil War. Oh, he, yeah, this was and it had the Native Americans not to bring back, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, he. Yeah, there's romantic attentions of Wrangler Jane and Jellica Thrift in here. Um, uh, business enterprises of crafty Sergeant O'Rourke and the local Indians. If yeah, they were the losers. Battles? Yeah, right. They were at this. Who was the losers? The military. It was all the worst people in the military. It's labeled as a sitcom in a western. Yeah, I don't want to look up if any of the cast is still alive. But <laughs> sounds like a little problematic. Maybe I'm sure all of these shows yeah, right. were problematic. It, it was more Mel Brooksy the humor is how I would describe okay. it. Interesting. Um, um, yeah, that but, was like. So it sounds like you were watching that in Rhoda. Yeah, see, I'm, <laughs> I'm just imagining like a 12 year old Jared Freed like watching Rhoda I, I just, <laughs> about like a single. I mean, I guess it makes sense for this podcast. She's yeah. like a single woman like living in the big city. I, I, I watch every show. Like right. that's like my love for um, reality TV. Like I, I would watch. I'd give them all a shot. Like right there, with, during that era. Like now I'm less trying stuff than I was before. Like I wish. I had the curiosity I once had. Maybe that would get me off my phone and give me a break. Yeah. Just get more into TV. That's the cure. Get Bring more back into Nick TV. At night. <laughs> I wish. No, now they have Wii TV. Now they have like stations that are like, they, they kind of scare me a little bit. They have these like stations that are all old TV shows. And it feels like they're like, it, it kind of feels like one of those like sci fi movies where they're like, numb your brain. Right. Go back to a better time when you didn't think of all the horrors. Watch Mr. Ed. Right. <laughs> you know, like it's. Well, it must be. It's funny because back in the day, there weren't like iPhones when we were watching this yeah. Nick and Night stuff. So that was kind of what you were doing when you 
should have been going to sleep. Right. Right. But now, I was scrolling. right now, Mr. it's Ed. like you don't. I don't need that. I don't need Nick at night. I have my phone, which will give me anything that I want to look at. In right. You can watch universe. Green Acres anytime you want on demand. Yeah. TikTok. Ugh. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, we live in a hellscape. So, um, anything. It's that time of year. <laughs> it's that time of year. What else we got going on? Um, we've got uh, we've got Candace is dubbed April. Refresh your approach, April. Maybe this is the conversation we're having right now. We have to like get rid of all this negativity. We got to refresh our approach. We got to yes. go out there and do things maybe a little askew of what we're normally doing. Exactly, because that's how change happens. Little changes. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's where I need to be. I'm on the road. Where if you're you out there, yeah. um, people, I'm like on the road. Okay. It, and the show's great. It's been fun. Comedy works in Denver. I'm coming this weekend. This comes out the 10th. I'm there tomorrow. Um, all weekend. Assemble the group chat. I love that club. Even though I had an issue with them once. <laughs> If you're listening, <laughs> all is not forgiven yet. No, I'm staying at a hotel this time. I stayed at, they have a, a, a apartment that they own. Oh. And they put, they were like, and I was like, hey, can I get the buy? I usually get like, and they'll give you like they'll 20, give you money and then 50 you bucks a night. Uh-huh. You go do, go shop the market on your own. You know? 50 bucks a night? What it's kind of always, hotel could you get for 50 bucks a night? <laughs> These clubs are really <laughs> that's skimming insane. the bottom of the pool. I No, that's what, the, it'll be short money. They'll be like, here's a hundred bucks a night. You go shop. And okay. for the 50 extra dollars a night that I would spend, it's worth the mental health and the Bonvoy points. Sure. So I remember last year I went there and I was like, hey, I would love the buy. And they're like, we got this apartment. Come. It's free. Free. And I go, uh, I and I kind of felt shamed, you know, like, oh, they're saying. You don't want to be snobby. Don't want to be snobby. Well, this made me even snobbier because then I gave my review of the apartment Right. And I was not. Nice. I'm a critical guy. Right. I'm. Th- I like to think I'm thoughtful. We all remember. We all remember the uh, the hotel stay that turned us into a snob. <laughs> right. <laughs> that was so that bad one, that they, you thought you were too good for it. They didn't have a garbage can. That's weird. That annoyed. Where are you supposed to put no, your shit? Well, that nothing is more Down annoying to me. Right. <laughs> nothing <laughs> bothers me more than when you get you have trash in your hand and you're like, "Where's the garbage?" You like, need g- garbage is everywhere. You everywhere. Yeah. That's my favorite thing about Manhattan, actually. Always on the corner. There's that. There's trash everywhere. Right. Like, there's trash cans everywhere. So yes. you don't have to be holding something for more than one block I that you want to tol- throw out. It gets me so. If I go to a coffee stand, and the like the sh- cream and sugar spot, there's no garbage next. If to there's it. no garbage within an arm's length, I want to scream. It right. just drives me crazy. So I had to like, you know, I'll create my own baggie with my trash for the weekend. Yeah, that's crazy. No moisturizer. No lotion. That's the thing. If you're going to shame me out of the hotel, make it even to the hotel experience. Also, if you have an apartment, like I would fill the fridge with sodas and waters and snacks. I'd really snack the person up. Right. You're staying at my home. Like make it a elevated. Make me go. This was fun. Right. They thought of everything. Yeah, they, oh my God, they thought of everything. Garbage? They really took, <laughs> garbage can. And then. So you're not staying there this time. They might cancel my shows after hearing this because I did a whole podcast afterwards about it. Okay. Just so did a already 30 heard. minute rant. Okay. And then the next day I heard like, the club's not happy with you. You, you know, I heard the podcast and like I, they, and then every comic that would go to Denver, they'd be like, they're talking about you. At the I mean, they works. should so know like- if it's free, they should know what you're you should. I think if anything is ever presented to you to you as free, you should. I always say, what are the details? Right. Can I get the can I get more details? Well, I would. I don't think they're going to go. Well, there's no Zero garbage garbages. can. No lotion. <laughs> no lotion. Right. No cable. Um, they had a directions. A Wi-Fi. Me- well, they had like a directions for how to hook your uh Hook your TV. Use your Netflix and do it from your computer onto the TV. They want uh, you to like the Chromecast. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. <laughs> I want the TV on the whole weekend on ESPN, noise in the background. Right. I mean, this might have worked for you if you were 21 years old. Right. At 35 at the time or 36 mm-hmm. or seven. Well, I'm coming back. I'm here this weekend. Not staying there. Not staying there. Uh, <laughs> got my. 
my buyout. Uh, then I'm in San Francisco. You can hear me complain about the hotels there. And then I'm in Pittsburgh, Columbus, uh, LA, 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 New Orleans, Dallas, Nashville, West Hampton, Milwaukee. I've also added Atlantic City and New Jersey. Nice. There's an Atlantic, Atlantic City, City in, New, in Jersey. New Jersey. Two different ones. There's a northern New Jersey one, and there's an Atlantic City one. And they're like right okay. around the same time. Hold on. I, Where's I, northern New Jersey going to be? NJ Pack. New, yeah, it's in Newark. So I'm in Atlantic City and Newark. I'm doing a little theater thing in the, both of those places. Come. Assemble the group chat. I'm already like, the set is like done. Mm -hmm. And now I'm thinking of another story to tell. For the set. A different, so I'm on the third special. Are you cutting something? I think I have to. Okay. We'll see. It's long. I, I did in. How long is it? 115. Yeah, you got to feel like an 20. hour you want to get to. Yeah, right? I would like it at 45, but that might be too short. Right. Well, better to have, better need to cut than need right. to add. Adding is harder than cutting. Some sort of, well, sort of. killing your baby a little bit. Right. But like it's, the work has already been done. Right. No, you're right. Yeah, I don't need to like get to a certain time, but mm -hmm. that's what's going on. I'm I'll sorry. tell you I'm, what to cut. I'm just you, <laughs> you let me know. I'll bring you, I'll bring you into the editing bay. Yeah. What's going on with you? Anything else to I announce? I just told you. My oh, head, <laughs> big move. I can't. Completely annoying. <sighs> another yeah. move. Come back to the city. So, oh, we're doing, we want to do another dating app makeover, so send your submissions to UUP at Betches.com. Are we going to do it on the YouTube page? I think so, or maybe we'll do it on the Inst we might do it on the Instagram or the YouTube page. We'll see. Just send us if you want a dating app makeover. Send the screenshots of your dating app profile and a little paragraph about what you your issue is. Yeah. If, if you know it, most people don't. Um, <laughs> well, I like when they write their issue and you can like see it in the right. in the. That's not profile. your issue. Yeah, <laughs> right. no, or it's, uh, there's one of two. One, it's like here's my issue, and I'm like, oh, this is cl obviously why this is your issue. Yeah. Or um, they have no idea what their issue is. Right. I like, I like, yeah. <laughs> the, the email tells the tale. I'll tell you, we'll tell you. We'll what tell you what you, what fucks you up. All right, let's start with a pot. Let's start with a, uh, an email. Uh, let's very, get back into very, the positive. Very positive email that the title is, Are Women Doomed to Be Alone Forever? <laughs> we're getting, we're getting positive spring vibes here. Can you imagine writing that out <laughs> in the title? Are women doomed to be alone forever? Well, I like that she's bringing everyone in with her. As a, <laughs> it's not like, am <laughs> right, I, ladies? it's not enough to be like, am I doomed to be alone forever? <laughs> right. It's like, uh, it's not just me. I'm right. This Isn't a, it horrible? <laughs> We can all agree we're doomed to be alone forever. Like, and what? all the women are like holding hands with a guy. <laughs> what, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. totally. Go us. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all get a house together. Well, it's like when people say anything about any of those circumstances, but your circumstance is like going fine. You're like, right. yeah, it does. <laughs> Sorry. It can, it's impossible to find anything out there. Right. Yeah. All right, let's. We don't get enough vacation days. You're on TikTok yeah. on in, on an island. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It is hard because like the internet is like the home of like just like if you want to bathe with a group of people that are like in the same you can situation find someone. as you, you can. And then we get then you it comes across your feed. You're like. Phew. Tough stuff. And it's like, you go, I guess I don't, I, you know, I feel for you. Yeah. Once you're past it, it's right. like, it's no longer <laughs> a, a, a gender thing. All right. <laughs> hey, J&J, love you all. So here it is. This may sound dark, but I'm wondering what you think. I'm a 32-year-old female and I've been on more dates than probably anyone I know. Aside from my year and a half college relationship, I've only been in two monthers. Many, many two monthers. I'm cutting out of, coming out of a series of dating situations where I was rejected and I'm starting to think how some women will never find anyone. I'm wondering if maybe that path needs to be more normalized in society as something women should know might happen. I never imagined it would be this hard to find a partner and I'm a, at a bit of a loss. I feel so surprised by life like society and everyone had me tricked into thinking that anyone could find love. Statistically, there are definitely women who are just, for whatever reason, doomed. <laughs> Statistic. Where is that statistic of the amount, the percentage of women who are doomed? About 20%. I haven't, I haven't seen that in psychology today. 
<laughs> Statistically speaking, 20% of women doomed, doomed <laughs> to live alone and disintegrate into the ground. And this Yeah, this is sense. a hilarious email. But people never really talk about it, probably because it's depressing as hell. What are your thoughts? Do you think some women are just doomed? Love, lonely, witch, wallowing in doom. Hey. Happy Wednesday. Way um, to bring us back. Um, interesting. It's funny. I remember hearing some statistic in college. I was in some like, like some actual research class that said that 90% of women will get married. 90%. 90% of women just will like, get married at some point in their lifetime. Right. And I remember feeling like, kind of soothed by that idea it it's, felt, weird, it's weird to now think back that that was something i was even anxious about right that i would get married at all right i mean it's a pretty high number what class was 10 percent are doomed 90 <laughs> percent. Do- okay what's the, what's the rate of doomed i think it was like a doomed class is on, so sad i know it was a class on like st- family and statistics and like and something like some sort of research based yeah. class yeah yeah, I, I, and that was like 15, thirteen years ago. So maybe, uh, maybe the doom rate has gone up potentially. Yeah, percent do- <laughs> It wasn't. It also wasn't ninety percent married, ten percent doomed. Right, right. It was <laughs> not married. Well, I, to this person, it, you know, this kind of made me think of the saying: "Comparison is the thief of joy." Yes, because they make it. They make their their issue so worldly. You know, they, right. they make it all women. And also they but make it women. I, I don't know why it's not people. Like, I, right. I, I don't understand why. I guess I do understand, but I, I would say to her if. Well, she's stigmatizing herself here. Yeah. Like she's creating a stigma. Right. Like willingly about right. herself. Right. This could have been written by like some sort of right wing um, like commentator. Do you know what I mean? That that like it's very Betch's, fun. Yes, yeah. like bet if it was written by a right wing commentator, like Betch's news would take and be like, "Look what this man said about women who don't get married or doomed." And I'd right. be like, "Because if this was, set, why are the men not doomed? <laughs> you know, like you go, why? Well, yeah. You know what I mean? I mean like, it can feel unmarried I, woman doomed, unmarried man." He avoided it. Like I don't understand. Again, I'm I'm right. looking at every, we're all the stars of our own movies. So I'm, that's why I'm like, I read this and I was like, I think she's like, I think it speaks really to, down right. the, you know, the road of negativity. In it a way. does speak to this feeling of like you do get a sense of like, even from our, to an extent from our mixer of like, mm. there are so many like beautiful, accomplished, incredible women who just have so much is- many issues finding someone when they want to. Right. And it doesn't feel like that feels like the case for well, and, men. Well, and they're trying. Right. You know, the, the mixer is an example of trying. Mm-hmm. And these are all, and like the men who came were trying right. too, yeah. but there was just yeah. less of them. Right. Why do these men not think they have to try? Why do these men not show up to the mixer? Right. And I'm at this mixer. I'm looking. I And I'm sure from her perspective, I want the most honest thing in the world. I want a partner yeah. who I can enjoy life with. Like pure intentions. The most pure. So right. I can understand why the doom is the other side of it. Because like, well, who wouldn't really, want why, this with me? Well, she's like, know? why is it so, why is it so hard to find this thing? I can understand her mindset. Of like, Why is it so hard to find this thing that I was kind of taught was a given? And it seems like it's a really big struggle right. for me when like my whole life I've been told that like this was just the natural thing that would happen and it doesn't feel natural at all. It feels like very, very difficult. Well, I would say like to to let me I'm not a doomed woman, but I'm a doomed man. I'm, but I'm you would never describe yourself that way. Ever. Yeah. But I would say to her, I understand her um, her struggle. I do understand mm-hmm. where she's coming from, where she's like, and I have this. Why aren't I, ha- you know, when I see, you know, the, the the men who speak about the wife they met, I knew the minute she walked in. Saw her in the bar, the most beautiful woman I have ever seen, and Pookie. I was just drawn <laughs> to her. It's weird how much we get along. When I hear those stories, I do feel like her. I, I feel the anguish and the, and the, where I go, 
What, Am what? I ever going to feel that? Would I ever feel? Right. Did they? Does that guy really feel it? Have I felt it already and I ignored it? You know, have mm-hmm. I? Did I fuck it up? Did I? Should I not speak to anyone I don't see across? You know, if if I don't see across the bar and go, oh my god, that's the woman of my dreams. If I don't do that, then don't talk to anybody. Like, am I wasting my time? You know, right. so I do understand her, like frustration. Fr- yeah. the, the fr- that's the word. I, I do too. For. Right. So, She's phrasing. I mean, I don't, I don't agree with her phrasing. Her I phrasing don't think is kind of political. <laughs> like it sounds and like. And it's just so dire feeling. Like it feels again, like I think what we do with the show or what we try to do is make these, the dating, dating feel less heavy. And like, right. this is the heaviest thing I've ever done. Right. If like that's how if she's internalized the show six years, congratulations. I mean, if she's internalizing saddest <laughs> listener award goes to no, I'm saying if she's internalizing in this, Dallas. If she's internalizing that belief. Yeah. That feels very that I could also understand why she's maybe not having as much success in dating because it feels like she's going into it heavy. Well, and she is. And if she speaks like she writes, I can understand why people go, let me back away slowly. Right. You know, and, and here's intense. And that's why the Compar- the comparison thing, the thief of joy, when she brings it to women and to are we doomed? It's like, let's do a little bit more me than we. Right. You know, I think that's kind of part of her issue. She says, I've been on more dates than any and probably anyone I know. Have you done a count? Like, I, you know, the, even that we can. Right. I can you don't know what mindset. also happens behind the scenes of people. Right. Yeah. But that's her whole point of view right. is comparing I go on 20 dates and I find no one and that person goes on one date and now, and they're not doomed. Right. And they're married. What the fuck? Yeah. Right, ladies? Well, I'm, I mean, part of it also, like, it goes to show you, I think, to an extent, is like, I think there's something to, it's a numbers game to an extent. Mm-hmm. But I also think, like, sometimes it's not, oh, and I'm, I'm, sometimes this way about a lot of things where it's not always about just knuckling your way through it to like, and sometimes if you're like a little type a or kind of controlling, you can try to do that because in other things it might lead to success. Yeah. But sometimes it's not about I've did, I've done all of the, I've checked all of these boxes. I've done all of these things. It's sometimes you can do less and achieve more. Right. And you know, this goes back to like last week's episode of like the hokey Dokey, you know, hang with friends, be, you know, yeah. be, you know, take care of your mindset. Like, I think their mindsets needs some taken care of. Yeah. Like when you're maybe take a break, <laughs> maybe take a break, maybe hang out with friends, like maybe, you know, see your family, talk to people about this, let them know like what you're going through. Like I, you got to say these words out loud and it, so that you can like hear them out of your own mouth. And I, but I understand their frustration. The And also, here's the other thing. I think this is also, like, not to, like, be, you know, this guy. But, like, I think what they're talking about is a lot to do with, like, social media and the phone and the way we live our lives now. Like, you can live your life alone. You know, right. way more possible to live your life alone today than it was you alone can go, does not mean doomed. Alone doesn't mean doomed, right. but your version of what, you know, a lot of people are opting for alone instead of okay. Yeah. So you're probably living in that, like, maybe you're going a little bit longer with someone who's decent and then they're going, and then two months in, they're going, eh, I can be alone. And, right. and it doesn't mean that everyone who's not alone has found the love of their life and is an incredibly happy and not you could be just as doomed in a relationship as you are not in a relationship well that's why people avoid relationships at all they say I'm some people think you'd be doomed. more doomed right yeah. I, I i mean i've been in that boat too mm-hmm. i'm doomed either way right <laughs> I, well you know i i don't know what's up candace am i doomed I wanted to, no. no i don't think you're doomed okay, thank you well, when I read this email, it goes to something that you were just saying. I was thinking back to, we had a couple episodes last year where you guys were saying your words are like spells. Mm-hmm. Yes. And she's very, from the amount of times doom was repeated. Oh, I mean. Year, she's very deep into that. But I looked up. This is a curse. I looked up this. <laughs> you shall be doomed She's cursed, herself. Ever, she's ever, cursed ever. herself. She's yeah. also yeah. wrong. I looked up the statistic and yes, overall, there are, there are like less single men than women Overall, if you're looking up all of like the different age groups, mm. 90 men per 100 women. That's also not a very big number. Mm-hmm. 
And you're also leaving out other factors of like sexuality of if these women even want to be married right. and like different mm-hmm. things like that. But on top of that, if we're zoning in on her age group, 30 to 34, it's 121 single men to 100 women. So it's actually like more single men than women. So if she's like fixating on this one statistic, she's not like taking in all these other factors. And right. it's, and if you're <laughs> if you're crucifying all these people to be doomed, then it's more doomed men than women. But even without that, with like social media and TikTok, as we know from searching certain things, that's what your FYP is going to continue showing you. Right. It's You'll gonna come up on your explore page. Doomed woman talk. That's all that's going to come <laughs> well, to that's you. That's true. It's like, right. yeah. And then that's your mindset yeah. of like, I'm the last single friend and it's like, but this right. is all of us. This is every other like last single friend out there. Well, that's a good that's a good point, especially as we're talking about um how social like one, your words are like spells. Yes, we've said mm-hmm. that before. And two, it's like your words are also like spells because your phone can hear you. Right. And <laughs> is going to reinforce whatever you're thinking in that in that way and then it be that I and then idea becomes more put in your head. And it's almost like Naomi's uh has said this before. It's like you don't have to believe every thought you have. Like just cuz it's a thought doesn't mean it's true. Right. Right. And that goes also back to the hashtag like you'll find the hashtag of everyone who tells you how right you are. Right. And yeah, this the world's doomed. We're all single. These men are all having a party. Right. What if you <laughs> change the doomed woman mixer? What if you changed the story? What if you changed like I'm 32. I've been I've been I've had so many I've been dating a lot of people. Everyone I date gives me a better sense of what I'm of the next person I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. I'm lucky I've gotten a bunch of these two monthers because it's the perfect length of time to not waste too much of my time, but also have a sense of what I'm looking for. And I'm gonna find that person soon because I just keep I just keep learning more about what my taste is. Yeah, I I I'm with you. She needs and also just speak an I. I think right. that helps you a lot. I also I, what I want when she goes into this women, this and mm-hmm. society that she's never like, heard. you're never going to change all these things. You're never going to like, it's going to be immovable. You know, I want a relationship, not because she's like speaking for all these women. We all want relations, right? And we don't have them. So right. we're doomed. It's like, no, it's insulting I, people who I, don't feel that way. Right? It's a little <laughs> insulting. So like, how about I? What, I'm jealous of her. I know I want something right now. I right. want the right person for me. You know, and, and I'm on the path to get there. I'm on the path. I've already I've sussed out all these idiots to find my idiot. Right. Yeah. I listen. I feel especially like the way we were talking before this email. Like I feel her. Sing it, sister. You know, like we're all doomed. But then I have to like. You have to like get out of it. You have yeah. to if you think if talk you take, yourself away from that. If you take yourself out of it for like a minute and you look at it from the outside looking in, it's never as bad as as the story you've told yourself. Uh, absolutely. With anything. And I mean, I think we've all gotten down about anything in our life that isn't going exactly how we thought it would be in that moment. I mean, you know, we talked about this before your Netflix special or like, right? you know, I've thought about that with like the age I would have kids. Like, I think that there's a sense of like, you've told yourself this story of this is how it would be. And if it doesn't turn out exactly like that, then you're fucked up. Jordana never thought she'd be moving for her fifth time in two years. (laughs) Never. It wasn't what I had uh, planned for myself. Right, And I'm sure you had a woe is me moment where you're like, I got to move out of this house that I love, that I've put some work into. And now we're going to put work. But you go, you do have to step out and go, look how lucky I am. Exactly. You know, I'm redoing a house that I'm going to live in forever. It's going to be even better than it was before. Yeah, I'm going to move, but this is like a new adventure I can have with my, you know, my new husband that we can go and kind of like remember these times of like. Isn't that a much better story for the exact same situation than the sob story I just tried to tell 20 minutes ago? Yeah, I think this person also (laughs) needs a single friend who's like, they need a Samantha in their life. They should come to a, a you up mixer because people meet a lot of women who are ready to go out with them. And I think that's also amazing. Absolutely. Let's do uh, an awkward encounter. Aw- awkward encounter. We also it's a voicemail. We love a voicemail. Love a voicemail. Keep calling in 212-589-8903. 212-589-8903. Hit it, Jorge. Hey, Jared and Jordana. I'm such a big fan of the show. I am calling, obviously, because 
I am in desperate need of help. I might have fucked around Another too hard for fuck it February. <laughs> and um, she fucked so around too hard. background, I work at a pole dancing studio. That's funny. Um, okay, so that we have a very big <laughs> female clientele. Um, but one day, this guy comes in with a friend for one of our stretch classes, and he's like, really hot. So it's fuck it February. So I'm like, Hey, give me your number. So he gives me his number. I text him. I never hear back from him. But now this man has come into the studio where I work three separate times, always comes up to me, tries to chat. How was your day? All this crap. So what the fuck is happening? Thanks. You guys are doing the Lord's work. I love you guys so much. Thanks. Bye. (laughs) <laughs> i love the intensity and also the casualness it, of it's the, great uh, great call i love i like hearing the voice i like right i maybe the first email would be different if we had a voicemail for i don't because the way we read it, it's like are all women doomed <laughs> and maybe she was like are we just doomed you know like, <laughs> right yeah that like, would sound a lot lighter right um so what do you think about this woman's predicament it's funny um talking about statistics in the last email I think like the idea of fuck it around February is to like fuck around and not feel that intensely about anything that you're doing a little <laughs> right, bit. Right. Tell that to you women. Right. <laughs> like if she gave, if she like, that's, I think why where men are doing it right. Cause they're so used to being the pursuers that they're, you know, they're getting six numbers and then they're only paying attention to the one person that answers them. For us, right. it feels like such a big thing that you're, giving your number to one person and then if it doesn't work you're like well that strategy is awful right 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 What's I your was statistical? Bold. right i right. you're not deserving because you were bold not right you know you don't right. deserve it but you don't you didn't earn it you're shooting you a did. shot yeah. it's called shooting your shot not going to the range and taking a bunch of shots right you know, signing like, a contract yeah right it, it is uh it's it, supposed to be playful Playful. And it's funny that like, first of all, it's funny that like two men just are like, what's going on here? Pole dancing class. Like <laughs> what are they waltzing in for a stretch class. I don't buy. It's a little bizarre. Right. Could I go to a pole dancing class and just I don't show know. up? I have. I've seen them on like TV shows when they do like a group activity, but I don't think I've seen any times that men have been there. It's one of those workouts I've never thought of. Like, I always thought it was a bad business idea. I guess it was. I'm sorry to this woman's I've career. Been to, I've been to one of those classes for like a friend's birthday. That's but that's the only like I I don't think anyone's like I go to the pole dancing week. class yeah. three times a week. Supposedly it is a very good workout if you're good at it. Like a lot of core strength. Yeah, stay I, on I, I would, pole. I would yeah. assume. Yeah, but I'm surprised. I wouldn't imagine men are doing that a ton. <laughs> It'd be so funny if that was like your. Uh, maybe we should do one for a subscriber number. I I would do. <laughs> If we get to 15,000, I'll go to a class and we can tape right. the whole thing. 10, we've got salsa. 15, we're at... From 15? Oh, no. Tw- yeah, we said 20 for salsa, 15 for pole dancing. I'll do a pole dancing class. Jordan and I will go to a pole dancing class. Right. Do 15, I have to participate? 000. We have to okay, participate. Okay. We will do it. I'll, do Jorge uh, and Candace have to participate? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jorge would probably be great at it. You're a climber. That's he's true. He does do rock strength. climbing. He does rock yeah. climbing. So we'll see if the skills uh, <laughs> translate. See if I'm ten percent away from Jorge we're, there. We're pretty at close. The pole dancing class. <laughs> we're pretty close to fifteen k. So you guys better get I on better it. Better hurry up. I, I I think first of all, this is so. I love this call because it's so the star of my own movie. She's like, I shot. I give him my number, and he keeps coming back to my pole dancing studio. It's like, yeah, he likes a stretch. Like right. I, she took his number. Different. Is that what happened? Yeah, she said, um, uh, I, oh, I know. She said, oh, I'm like, hey, yeah, hey, give me your number. Mm-hmm. She gives her the and number, she, she texts him, and he, and he never answers. This happens all the time. I get all these. How so- often is he coming in, though? That's a good question, because that is kind of weird. One time I would understand. <laughs> I don't know. He came in. He, he, he's a lot. Also, we don't know his sexuality. Like, you don't know. He came That's in with true. another guy. Maybe they're together. I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of, like. Here's the thing about shooting your shot. You shoot it and you walk away. Right. It's over. You did it. It's a no. No answer. No. It's it. Yeah. Maybe. No. No. Yeah. (laughs) Well, that's why, um, again, I think it's like you can't just do it once because then it's like it builds it up to this feeling of like I'm bad at this. I'm good at this. 
Do it to 10 people. Right. See how you, and, and don't overthink any of them. Right. Make it a policy. Right. Rather than a one time thing. That's it's, how men do it. They pretend you're special, but they actually are asking <laughs> several people for their numbers. You're all special to me. No, I had someone ask. They're like, I DM this guy with 80,000 followers and he hasn't gotten back yet. Should I message again? And I'm like, he no. saw it. He right. saw it. He's being polite by saying nothing. That's OK. I mean, like when men do this, it's a lot more scary. Because men will go, hey, 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 oh, hey. Yeah. You know, they, and then, oh, you fucking bitch. I'll you give know, the like, same advice to a man. If it's, if you've said it, no answer is a no. Right. It's no. So you did it once. They saw it. They ignored it. Goodbye. Right. And when you live in the extremes, I'm like, I'm not, I'm just giving you generalized center of the bell curve thoughts because you go, well, what about if they missed it in the reserve pile? And I'm like, Probably not. Right. Would a man not feel weird? Wouldn't you feel weird taking a number and then going back and seeing the person and if you didn't answer? But, a little I bit? Get, I, it's a little weird because it's such a specific class. Right. It's I'd feel space. a little weird if I if someone asked for my number and I was not interested, but I gave them the number, they texted, I didn't answer. I would feel a little... I wouldn't go up to them and speak to them. I, I guess... Think, right? Would you? I probably would. I'd be like that. I feel like you'd that, answer though the text. You wouldn't. Maybe agree. I don't know. I I feel you like wouldn't. my non-answer is like the answer, and then I just move on with my life. Like, listen, I don't know what level the guy's been back four times to this space. Like, he obviously has a reason he's going there that has nothing to do with her. Right. You know, and listen, you can believe. Well, he keeps coming back. I don't know. He's has, he has your number. That's true. Didn't happen. If I was this woman, if I had to give her a, if I was, if she wants a little bit of hope, maybe one more text because a text is so direct. She could do one more. I, yeah, why not? And then you're done. And then you're done. It's over. Okay. Hey, just, I wanted to, so acknowledge it. This is embarrassing because maybe your non-answer was a no, but I just would really feel like I didn't do my due diligence if I didn't. Right. Say what's up to you and say, I would love to get a drink sometime. What's wrong with that? Yeah. You acknowledge that this might have been a no and you just kind of like them. It's a vulnerability. And then Here's they'll the- probably say, giving you, if they're not, if they're a nice, normal person, they're going to know they're going to see you again. They might be give you a lie about someone that. That's a reason, a reason for them not being interested. Absolutely. And here's another thing I just want people to acknowledge. When you reshoot your shot over DM or over text, Lion gonna lion. Mm-hmm. Man gonna be a man. Because at some point, the guy's gonna think to himself. At she's some point, into me. <laughs> well, at some point, she's into me. Oh, let her blow me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it's like, how many times right. are you gonna, I mean, how many times are you gonna force this pizza at me? I'll eat the pizza. Well, same goes to a man who keeps asking a woman out if she's not really interested. Eventually, Maybe she would. Maybe this is the difference in why it's uh, more. It seems more predatory for men is that you might be like, "Oh, I'll let him buy me dinner." I guess, <laughs> like, I'll let him buy me dinner. Right. And then, maybe, but that guy who's know. asking over and over again isn't asking for to buy you dinner usually. You know, like right. Well, ne- well, she's not asking to blow him. Right. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, Fair. but yeah. you're gonna take what you want from the situation, right? You're right? gonna you're gonna go. Well, I could make it go the way I want it to right. go. Yeah, I haven't been out in a while. I'm not I'll really take interested. The free dinner. Why not? Right. I'm seeing someone else, and maybe this will take the edge off. Right. So when you reshoot your shot, like the percentages go down for, I've been thinking about them too, right. and they go up for, ah, come on, just go. We might as well be a statistics class. Right. We're just, but that's true. Hundred percent chance yeah. of doom. <laughs> I mean, every time you have to ask again, the less likely of anything turning out the way. If you if you if you go for a job interview and then you're emailing them to see if they're followed right. up, the chances are it's not happening. Right. right There's a chance right. you might as well, but but you have to acknowledge the number of times. Is yeah. Let's do another email. Let's... UUP at betches dot com. UUP at betches dot com. I like this one. Yeah, you want to read it? 
Wondering if I can get you to weigh in on this recent incident. Thanks in advance. I've been seeing this guy for a little over a month. Things have been going pretty well. We see each other often and I like him, but definitely still feeling this out. That being said, he asked if I wanted to go to the movies with him and two of his siblings and their significant others and, and his nephew. <laughs> that's a big, that's that's a big a, what is this? How do you find that many seats next to uh, each other? Talk about the old sitcoms. What is this, the Partridge family? <laughs> All the whole, whole kit and caboodle. Um, originally, <laughs> him, two of his siblings, their significant others, and his nephew. I mean, I guess they're close. I guess so. Originally, I said yes, but the idea of meeting a bunch of family members made me anxious. Personally, I'm not ready to introduce him to my family, so I don't feel comfortable meeting his. I explained this to him and said that I would have to back out, but that I hope he knows that this doesn't mean that I'm not invested in the relationship, just not at that step yet. He told me that I was overthinking myself into an anxious state, but that he understood. Doesn't sound like he That's understands. Annoying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess maybe uh, meeting the family isn't a big deal to him. However, he is clearly very close to this family if they're going to on a sibling movie date. So it doesn't feel like a situation to take lightly. What do you guys think? Any advice is much appreciated. A bitch who secretly hates movies. What do we think? I think he's I think his response is a red flag. Um mm. it's kind of an annoying response. Yeah. It's like she's trying to tell you her feelings about where she's at and he's like, I don't actually like you that much. Like stop overthinking it. Right. Um and I find that to be like a little annoying. Oh it's yeah, like she's not he saying totally dismissed her feelings completely, right. and he didn't make it about it's it's clearly a show of her communicating how she feels in the relationship. Right, he's like kind of dismissing her. Yeah, clearly, like he goes meet my family. She goes, that's too much for me. So the sad part of him going, right. he's like, oh, I don't whoa. really give a shit about these people. It's not a big deal. <laughs> right, is it's him not hearing. That she's like in a different space than him. Right. She's like trying is, to communicate where she's at. Right. And I guess it doesn't matter to him. So, you know. I don't know. What would you like? I've, 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 I've introduced people to family of mine not thought it was a big deal. Right. And. Well, what if someone said to, let's, if someone said to you, just so you know, like, I feel like that's a. I'm, I don't, I'd rather not meet your family. To me, that's a big deal. I'd rather not do that. Would you say you're overthinking it? <laughs> no, I would, I would probably have to say, okay, good to know. And chew on that. Like right. good to know. And I won't ask you to those things in the future. Unless I'm also where you're at of like, I think it's serious. Right. But how does he know where she's at? If not to ask, come see my family. I, I don't know. Right. I, I, I don't like his response. Mm -hmm. Not about it. But I don't. I'm trying to figure out what message was told or if any message was taken at all. It doesn't sound like he took a message from it. Right. It sounds like he's it sounds like he doesn't really care what she thinks about the invitation. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> I, I guess you're freaking out again. But good luck. See ya. We're going right. to go see Paw Patrol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like what movie are you seeing that's good for you and his the nephew? nephew? Yeah, how old is the nephew? Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure if he's saying it like that to to sort of as like a defensive kind of thing mm -hmm. of like because sometimes men will do that if you're like I've said this thing before to kind of like if I'm not interested in someone I'll be like I'm not really looking for a like anything serious right now and then they'll be like well neither am I right well, right, like, right 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 yeah I'm not sure if he's doing that. Or right. if he's doing like he's because he's a little embarrassed that maybe he feels like he was like too much mm -hmm. or if he actually just doesn't care what she thinks. I don't know. Right. Both options are on the table. Mm -hmm. I think. I mean, what this does for her, if we're speaking directly to the emailer, it offers you entree to the conversation of how where we're at the next time family comes up. Right. Remember I told you that's a big deal to me? Well, I feel so into you now that I want to introduce you to my family. I hope you know how big of a deal this is for me. I like that. You know, like, I think this is like the setup. I'm ready to go to the movies. Right. Whenever you guys are going next. <laughs> right. I'll see Beetlejuice too. <laughs> so, I, yeah, because this, this to me isn't the answer. This is setting up the question that will be asked right. later on. If he responded with... Totally get that. 
just so you know, like, I, it's not, I understand it's a big deal to you. It's, it's not something that I think of as like a big deal to me. Right. So like I wasn't, I wasn't trying to necessarily let you know that I'm like way further ahead. It's just something that I don't take as seriously. Right. Or that is not as big of a deal to me. That would be like a normal response where you're like communicating what this means to you. Right. I agree. I, I feels very young. Yeah. His response. I mean, who's paying for all the tickets? Do you guys pay on your own? <laughs> they, got, <laughs> they got a family pass to the AMC. Yeah. I yeah, I I just this felt like a immature response, but also I don't you know, if I was to look into my crystal ball, I don't see them becoming more serious. Right. I I actually think these are two people thinking of relationships two different ways. Like he sounds like he's thinking of it like a kid. Yeah. And she's thinking of it like an adult, like, whoa, that's a huge, that's a step for me. And I, and it's like, okay, I would try to like yeah. see if we're an adult dating a child and mindset a little, wise. A know? little over a month is kind of when you figure that out. I would say we're there when you discover how seriously someone takes dating. I would say it takes about a month. Right. Maybe, and th- to me, I'd be like, oh, you're dating someone who's not really thinking in the same terms. Right. That would be. Which is again. Back to the person who's doomed with the two month relationships, a good thing. Now you have an extra right. experience now to you, add to your dating prowess. Right. Now you don't have to see the new Pixar film. <laughs> Let's do some games. Let's play some games. UUP at betches.com. Red flag or deal breaker. We love this game. Love it. Okay. He brings a brand new puppy on the first date. Hi, long time listener, first time caller. How annoying. I know everyone probably says that. I don't know about that. I was an annoying man. <laughs> was not annoyed. I was, just, I was a little bored. Yeah. <laughs> Entertain us. Yeah. Have an interesting one for you. Red flag or deal breaker. A guy shows up to a first date with a 10 week old puppy that he got 48 hours prior with no heads up or warning. The kicker is that he's wearing the puppy in a baby Bjorn. Bjorn, 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 Bjorn. Uh, Bjorn. So the kicker is that he's wearing the puppy in a baby Bjorn and the puppy peed on the bar floor at one point. Thank you. Okay. Um, so red flag or deal breaker. What do you think? I understand that some people would be into this. I would not. And it's mm. not, I'm not like, I'm not against dogs. Uh, they don't believe you. The dog people are already I know, they're like, if you're, sharpening their knives. That's the thing. The dog people are kind of like, if every time you see a dog, you don't like squeal in excitement right. and go nuts, then you fucking hate dogs and you just don't get it. It's, it's like, weird. I don't want to be with your new dog that's peeing all over the place on a first date. I want to decide if I want to be around a dog. I don't want to just be the, be bombarded with the dog. Especially unannounced. Yes. You never even brought up, I, I, hey, I'm getting a new dog, and the reason this date's a little tough, we're doing a brewery because I have to bring it. I hope you don't mind. Is that okay? Is that yeah. okay? It's just like, a, it's a weird assumption to put onto someone. And it feels like you're doing it to sort of almost like, it's like a little cheesy, like I'm attracted. Oh, I think a lot of guys yeah, do this yeah, with yeah. their dogs of like, girls love dogs like right. i'm gonna bring the dog and she's gonna be obsessed with the dog and it's gonna make her more endearing to me i've had do any guys are like do you want to see my new puppy you want to come back and see my my new dog like no <laughs> well in, in that scenario it's actually like i would maybe understand why a woman would see it as safer like that oh the bring- dog's here so he's not gonna like try and like bring me you know he has no thought of bringing me home i don't know oh, man, oh, i mean if anything right. why don't we go hang out at my house because the dog needs to do shit. whatever yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This would, I would be like, oh, mm. men, we are rascals. And he's bringing it in the baby Bjorn. He yeah. like thinks he's being adorable. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, and it maybe would work for some people. It wouldn't work for me. I would be annoyed. If a woman did this? If the dog's yeah. running around. I, I don't know. It would show like, like, did you even, do you want to be here? Is this like a real, in, yeah. like, is this a, is this like a, a meaningful, you're looking for a meaningful connection or are you looking for like, a little bit of like a joke playtime right fuck and around thing am, am i fitting into your schedule you know right. like you didn't even like i understand listen i understand if you want to go hey i have a dog we, i i walk the dog let's go on a dog walk date is different right when you, do, show you think, up yeah or if i mentioned that if you mentioned that he had a dog and she was like oh my god definitely bring the dog i would love to meet the dog that's, that's like great one thing yeah i don't like the 
surprise brought onto the date. I agree. Um, I, just any surprise. It could be a dog. It could be anything. Like, oh, and I, I didn't want to tell you. You know, it's like, well, why didn't you let me know what I was getting into? Why didn't right? Why didn't you give me a, an option? Hey, uh, before we go out, I don't. You know, like, what if she was allergic? Right. Candace, you have a dog. What do you think? You're into dogs. Candace is mad. I am the dog person of this podcast. Did you I'm bring your dog on a date? I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring her because of. I mean, my dog is four now, or she's turning four this year. But I've got. I've had her since she was eight weeks old. He can't do the dog walk because a dog that small, it's like doesn't have all of its um, immunizations yet. So mm. you can't like the dog can't walk around. But I. I it do could think be at a brewery. A, I. Uh, that's that's <laughs> where I think on the bar. I think there's a third option here. I think he's like doing a two birds one stone thing because for a dog that small though you are supposed to socialize them and take them to places have them meet a bunch of people or smell that's different even smells right I'm and that's used. why i think yeah. it's like he didn't care that much about the date or he's trying to like socialize the dog while do the date with no respect to like giving her the heads up what if a guy if a guy showed up with his dog a dog that i didn't know about or yeah. agree to being on the date would be yeah that'd be annoying that's it's annoying good. even, because even the draw the true dog lovers agree right Good, good to know. Yeah, we've we've covered all our bases. <laughs> yeah, well, deal breaker. That, that Let's deal do another breaker. one. That leads us to the next question. Yeah, this is another three bears. Okay. Too much information, not enough information. <laughs> this is they divulge too much before the first date. Right, For context, it. I matched with this guy on Hinge the day before we were setting up our first date. I don't think it's necessary for him to let me know this ahead of time, but I guess I appreciate the honesty, so I will be him. There's only him. There's only him. <laughs> There's only him. <laughs> it's a full iPhone screen. So... <laughs> Before we meet up tomorrow, I feel like there's one thing I should tell you in case it's a deal breaker. I'm temporarily living at home to finish paying off my student loans. As I mentioned, I commute into the city twice a week and I don't mind driving, so I have no problem driving into the city. I hope that it's not a deal breaker. And then a picture of a dog and maybe this will help. <sighs> I hate this guy. <laughs> yeah. I hate I don't it. like any I, of it. He I don't made like it worse. Every text gets worse. Right. Um here's the thing. Nothing wrong with living at home. I mean, or I mean, or maybe that would be a deal breaker for someone, sure. Maybe. I don't think it's such a huge thing that you need to tell someone like this right before the date. I think the dog thing is annoying. And then um I think it's a little listen. I temporarily live at home to pay off student debt. Like I, which is, I think living at home with aspiration is a is, is tell a someone on the date. beautiful thing. You say on the date. I, I mean, I guess if you didn't ask this question in the app, then it doesn't matter to you. I'd be like, where? Right. You know, what part of the city do you live in? I, this would have came up earlier for me. Okay, you think you would have discovered that earlier? I think in my fact finding, should we go on a date? Chit chat. Okay, I think this would have came up if it hadn't have come up. I don't like the idea of like, if this is a deal, if if me working hard to get rid of my debt makes you not want to fuck me. Like, right. I, I don't know. I don't like the the terms he, of it. I agree. Because what is she supposed to say to that? Right. Oh, fuck that. All right. Thanks for letting me know. Right. Forget, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> like, I'm out. Like, right. and It's like either say, I agree. So either say it before the date is set up. Yes. Or say it on the date. Right. Hey, just to let you know what's going Oh, where do you live? Actually... I, I got to let you right. know, I don't live in the city. You never brought it up, so I didn't really think to say it. Right. Like, you could say it on the date. Yeah, I wouldn't feel... I, I wouldn't feel, again, like, that's, bamboozled by no. someone who mentioned that on a date. I don't think it's a big deal. Right, and you might go home and go, hey, that's not not for me. They're they're in a different space of life than I'm looking for. Right. Which is totally fine. I think to make a TikTok afterwards and be like, this guy didn't even tell me he was living at home to pay off debt. I'd be like, you're an asshole. Who did that? Well, I think that happens a lot now where it's like. Oh, you think the, he's worried about about I'm not her, a TikTok, like, but I think, think he's he worried. Feeling deceived. Feeling deceived. You've wasted my time. I think he's getting ahead of that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like. I mean, to me, if you think going on a date with someone who reveals a piece of information that you decide they're not for you on is someone wasting your time, then you're not going to be a fun person to date. That's I'm all with you. I, what, I, it could I be, agree. Right. Just because someone it could. There's a million things that could turn you off on a date. That's why it's a date. Right. He's also I, not asking you to come out to him. No, no, he's being very agreeable. Yeah. 
I'll drive. I'll come after work. You know, like he's, I'm there. I, again, yeah, I'm with, I just don't like the way he's presenting this. No, I agree. I think it's unnecessary. I agree with the timing. Doesn't make sense. I think the dog thing is also like, oh, yeah. We- <laughs> <laughs> your dog's ugly and I hate you. No, I don't want to go out anymore. Like, what's she supposed well, to say? He, she's in a position where the dog is like. I guess he's trying to lighten the mood. Yeah. By being and, like, hey, I'm not like super serious. Like, I'm like, uh, this doesn't have to be a big thing. But here's this thing that I've still kind of presented as a big thing. Right. And he's getting ahead, which I understand. He's getting ahead of like, I don't want to go. Well, he could also be saving his own time. I, if I'm going to the city, I want them to be like, sure, that they don't mind a guy who goes in the city. Right. You know, it's all. It might be more for him. Right. It could be. It could be. Yeah. Um, it's a deal breaker the way it's being presented to me. Right. But if someone said it on, I think it would be a deal breaker for you, even if they said it on the date. Yeah. But, that's just the free, date, but there's but plenty of people it wouldn't be. Yeah. I, I, it would be a, yeah. If I, if I went on a date and I come to find out they're commuting into the city while living at their parents, I, I, I would right. say we're in different places in life. That's not kind of where I'm looking to date. I also think if you're so insecure about something that you're presenting it this way, you need to work on like your own feeling about your situation and how you tell your story. Yes. I think you got to go on the app. Hey, just before, you know, and I don't know. I live. Or, to think, well, is your someone, location on the app? What if someone the suburbs or is it the city? You know, like right. this. Why is he acknowledge Like was, was he this, was he being deceptive before? Right. Why? Uh, I'm kind of on. Uh, I'm not a, against him, but I. Uh, It's weird to like feel the need to have to say this and then go, oh, cute puppy. Right. I'm trying to think of something like what if the what if the text said, hey, just so you know, like I'm I actually just got out of like a really long term relationship. Mm -hmm. I'm not really looking for anything serious, but I like I'd love to go out with you and have a good time. We've been the night, but the right before the date, just so you know, I I think that. That almost makes you see, but that does, we had I guess that, that one last week, right? That scenario also doesn't make you seem as judgmental and bitchy if you say, "Okay, like I think that's right. not for me," right? Because <laughs> we even said last week the whole point of the first date is to like let's see what happens with this, right? So when you write that, you go, "Well, you're already you're only saying looking what's for not one happen. thing," right? That's true. This is different. This I is guess, different. in that way. He he's saying, "Let's go on the date, see how we vibe. Right. Who knows where it will go." Yeah, you don't need to tell to fuck me in my race car bit. <laughs> you don't need to tell someone everything that could turn them off to you before the date, unless you've been deceitful before. I think this guy's getting ahead of his location being city mm-hmm. and showing up in the date, right. and then where are you? Oh, where'd you come from? Right. Suburb. He's stig- he is doing what the other emailer did, stigmatizing himself right. before anyone has a chance to stigmatize him. She knows you commute. This right. is part of the conversation. You haven't, of the dece- first date. you haven't been deceitful. No, so it's. You should, yeah, he's done it to Just himself. say it on the date or say it in the, or if you really, if you really feel like you want to get ahead of it, weave it into the conversation before you go out. Absolutely. Not this way though. <laughs> Let's do one more. Okay. This one's about friends. They find changes to your lifestyle cause for concern because it no longer matches theirs. Okay. Hi, j and I love the pod. I'm 27 female. And my boyfriend is 30 male. We've been dating for three years and moved to the suburbs together this past year. My close friends and their partners still live in the city where for context, I live for the last eight years. My friends have made disapproving comments to me about moving to the suburbs and have been checking in with this with sincere concern as if I'm out of my mind for wanting to move on in life. The reaction is as if I've signed a death sentence for my lease in the suburbs. I explained my reasons as I've matured and felt my priorities have shifted a yard house, more space. Uh, More recently, my friends were insulted that my boyfriend wasn't interested in attending their day drinking event and once again checked in with sincere concern over a not so concerning situation. My feeling is that they are living in their college days and will continue to remain in the college neighborhood and attend day drinking parties well into their 30s, whereas my boyfriend and I would prefer a different lifestyle. (laughs) This is the most judgmental email I've ever read. It keeps going back and forth. Like in the beginning, I was like, these friends are right. annoying. And then and I'm, I'm like, like her. Oh, she's annoying. Jordana, yeah. <laughs> did you experience any shade or disapproving comments when you chose to transition to the burbs? I'm all for accepting others, but it feels like my friends are insulted that I've grown in a different direction. Sincerely, a betch in the burbs. I don't think you know how you sound. Right. Like I've grown in a different direction. I could imagine this person thinks I am an animal. I mean, like there clearly no, not because she's writing in for your advice going, on this. I get. No, she asked for your advice. 
<laughs> not mine. I don't, I don't like, oh, we're not all animals <laughs> like Jared. Immature losers. I think, <laughs> I think if I presented my suburban experience like this to my friends in the city, they would not want anything to do with me. Hey, want to go? Dr- uh, ready? <laughs> like, okay. Hey, Jordana. <laughs> Ring, ring. Want to go uh, day drinking? We have this fun event. It's St. Patrick's Day. Want to come out and, you know, put on some, uh, you know. You know, I really think I'm just like past that, that like kind of immature stage of my life. And I'm I'm looking for something like I'm, to be like a real adult. Uh, you oh, know? cool. So you don't <laughs> want to drink green beer and wear, uh, you know, four leaf clovers on our heads? No, I'm an I'm an adult now. Oh. Unlike you. I, I guess I'm not an a adult. A loser still I'm in the city. Still living my college yeah. days. My sense is that her friends probably feel very, whether she's saying this stuff, to, if she's saying this stuff directly to them, that's insane. <laughs> but I think even if she's not saying it, she clearly is putting on an air of like feeling like some sort of superiority of having moved out. Um, and that is probably what they're reacting to in a way. Well, I, I, I think it, it, there's cause and effect to everything. Right. You know, life is gravity. Um, I do think that, let me give her empathy. Okay. She does feel judged for leaving the city. Right. And when she says, like, their original, like, why are you leaving? They're a little bit, there's a little bit, when the first person leaves, you give them shit because you're a little insecure. Am I behind? Mm-hmm. Am I not doing the adult thing? And you go, whoa, well, you're going to be old and go to the, and they kind of fuck with you because they're a little, like, sad to see Time is passing. Right. It's the end and of an era. End of an era, but they're going to give you shit a little bit. And then you come back with, I guess we've chosen a more adult direction. Right. It's a response to, you know, it, it's the You're ball busting annoying. didn't go in the right way to me. Th- that's the it most got empa- tense it instead got- of playful. Right. Because there's no vulnerability in either, in either sects like present presentation of this. Absolutely. Cause to say like, like someone has to turn to you and go, that's really great. Congratulations on right. the move and, and you and your boyfriend, like, and she I feel like, to- and you could, and you could say like, but I, and I, but at the same, I feel a little like anxious that I'm not there yet. Right. That right. would be a normal, I think there's, that's what they're saying, but without saying. Right. And she's taking it as not that they're, but then she's doubling Judging down. my life and I don't, and now we will be doing garden parties instead of your day drinking floozy times, well, you know? She, she's doubling down on this like superiority complex thing, right. which is making her seem even more annoying to <laughs> the people because now they're sensing that she feels that she's better than them, which according to what she's saying, right. seems like to me. She's using specific language. Right. I mean, anyone I think who has sweeping generalizations over like one area versus the other Mm. is not a self-aware nuanced person. There's benefits to both of those things. And if you can't see that, I think that like you're trying to convince yourself that you made the right decision. Right. Both like kind of like you said in both scenarios. They're both doing it. And there's an all, there's an all, uh, another thing that maybe the friends aren't really close with the boyfriend and they're not sure if he's right for her. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's because they keep trying when, if someone moved away and was just giving me this like passive aggressive tone, I'd be like, "Ah, well, good luck. Right. With your, she was, she's actually saying PTA meetings. (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah. I, uh, but, uh, that, that's the only other thing that I can think of is that the boyfriend and the friends aren't like, simpatico right. that could know? be it it does get a little weird i think there is like a, there is a moment of weirdness i think once a certain um like a critical mass mm-hmm. starts doing one thing i do think there's a weirdness with the people who have not who are not doing it oh my god no you know any in any co- like life she, and she's context. at that age 27 yeah. right where like yeah some people are like ah, i'm not ready to leave the city and then yeah. some people are like I've been working towards this every day for the last seven years. Right. And you, you it's and one of those ages is a reveal. where it's like you could have four friends from high school that, or college that were super close. And now they're all in completely different stages of, your, of their lives. Absolutely. And maybe you're realizing you've outgrown these relationships. Maybe you're realizing that you want different things in life. And, you know, listen, I, I you know, it's the day after Easter. I'm watching friends of mine from college posting like their three kids dressed alike on a Easter egg hunt. Right. You know, like, and I'm 
watching it from a plane. Well, it does make you probably think to an extent, am I doing Am I doing this right? How you count right. the years. Am I behind? Should mm -hmm. I have done certain things earlier? You know, they might look at my photo with golden bachelorette Leslie, golden bachelor mm -hmm. Leslie, and, you know, that was on the show and see a show where there's all these people and go, well, maybe I should have kept with the blog. Right. Should I have taken more chances? Should <laughs> right. I take the easy way out? Right. right. So right. it goes all ways. Yeah, totally. Um, I think someone has to put down their weapons. In That's this, what I'm saying. The this, vulnerability right. is what brings you together in those phases. Right. Instead of everyone like trying to convince themselves that they're on the right path. Right. And that's and when you use words like um, I've grown in a different direction, it just sounds a little shitty. Like, you know, you're doing these things. You know, you're saying what you're not saying. Uh, right. They're living their college days. We remain, remain to, in the college neighborhood. I mean, you don't believe that, do you? Like they, these people are just going to stay in the college neighborhood forever like this isn't right you know, they're not in hades or do you, you have know? any like, right do you have any sense of like why someone might be in that stage right still and enjoy also, it yeah. and be okay with it and well, that's what maybe makes they you didn't unrelatable find their guy eight years ago and well that's how these i mean sort of in you've mentioned this women. In, you've mentioned this in your stand-up special but that's sort of how these karens are born right in a way where it's like right. There's this feeling of like, because, I, and the su suburbs can sometimes feel like a bubble. Yeah. So you're kind of like only surrounded with people who are doing that. And then you get a little judgmental of people who do, do it things a, a different yeah, way. Outside of your bubble. And you can only, they only become cartoons to you. They're not real people. You felt that they were mean to you when you left the city. They're feeling that too. Right. You know, I hope you guys make up or just stop talking to each other. It seems like you don't, you know, it's okay that you grow outgrow each other. Yeah. That's okay too. That's also fine. If you like each other. Some people write in for a red flag deal breaker and find out they're the deal breaker. It's kind of fun when that happens. <laughs> That's why this show's yeah, great. Exactly. How about you guys tell a friend, a coworker, a brother, a sister, a mom, a pop about this great podcast that we put on every Wednesday and Sunday. We love doing this show. Tell everyone. Tell everyone. We want it to go forever yeah. and get bigger and oh, bigger. And we got another uh, save the date for another wedding. Did we really? So, yeah, we did. Thanks for thanks for inviting us. What? Did we get a I'll note? Show, I'll show it. I'll show you the note. We gotta read it. We gotta. We gotta, right, yeah, we gotta you know, I got a message on my. I I I get so Candace, annoyed. Have, Candace is gonna grab the note. I want to see the note, but I get so annoyed. Let's make this podcast a little bit longer. <laughs> That's looked, what we need. More just to Jorge. Time. He's like, oh, come on. I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, but I, I, I got a mess. I did like a question box because I was traveling yesterday. And it's so funny, like we're talking about tone and when you know someone is just like trying to like cut you at the knees. Mm -hmm. Someone wrote to me, they're like, why are all these people asking you dating questions? And I'm like... <laughs> What well, the fuck do you know? Uh, right. And I'm like, <laughs> listen, I, my dating successes and failures personally, we've had a, I, I, it is funny to think like, I've never said, you've never said, I don't think that we're experts. experts. No, in fact, in fact, we constantly say that we're not. <laughs> right. And say. we're like, this is a commiseration. This is about hearing something that's difficult for you talked right. out loud in a really reasonable way. Maybe they've like stumbled upon your page and they're like, or it may is be, there something I'm missing? Right. Well, you know? maybe I, I was like thinking, I was like, maybe I need to do one of those douchey, like there's a lot of new people here. Anyone? Hi. <laughs> There's a lot I just of new want to people. It's such myself. a humble brag. I hate. There's a, there's lot, a lot of new people. <laughs> I lot. always go to their page. I'm like, did they? Get, are they in a million today? Guys, that's going to be the new. Um, <laughs> a lot of you have been asking. Right. Is 
Hey guys, for anyone new here, there's a lot of you. A lot of <laughs> Something happened. They I, make it, I'm like, did I miss this viral moment that this nobody had? Right. <laughs> like, were you on the Today Show? What There's happened? There's a little bit about me. Right. For anyone new here. You Here's a refresh. Right. <laughs> and I was like, maybe I should. I held back. I was. You could do it. I'll I was two allow whiskeys it. in on the flight. That's my new plane how, drink. How many, in the similar sense, how many people, how many new followers do you need to be able to, to uh, justify doing that? You need to have risen 5,000 followers in a week. Okay. That that I would go. All right, there's five thousand new people here. You could say hi, guys. Hey. Okay. Uh, For anyone a, who doesn't some know confusion. me. Okay. <laughs> Fair. Five thousand. Um, okay. I talk about farting on planes, and I talk about dating sometimes. And there's a Netflix special out there. Please go watch it. So that now, would be my. Now you got to say. So there's five thousand of you here <laughs> right. that are new. I want to <laughs> a little bit I about had me. A jump a little bit. Yeah. Like I was at 5,000 yesterday. I'm at 10,000 today. Also the smaller your number is the bigger the jump, you know, That's there's true. a percentage. Yeah. So That's I, a percent. Right. A percent, percent would work better. 5% change. 7%. 7% change. Yeah. Cause what's 7% of 1500? I don't know. I'm an idiot. I mean, that's a tough one to know off. Of. Right. That's what a big, that, if someone, <laughs> 105? No, we need a 25% of 1,500. 25%, fine. 300? That's still kind of low. Still but we'll, you know, brutal. 25. Okay, how about once you're no, over 10,000? 25% is not 300, right? Of, of 1,500. Oh, wow. 15,000. I thought 15, you meant 15,000. No, 15,000. Oh, 1,500, you can't be doing any of this shit. 3,700. 15,000. Uh, 3,700. Okay, if you have 15, 25%, I think is, that's 25%. Let's call it 20, that's even a lot. Fine, 20% okay. jump in your... You can do a, hey I guys. know there's a lot of new people here. Yeah. <laughs> so we... Let me reintroduce myself. Let, so we gotta save the date. Okay, we gotta save the date. It's for a wedding in October in Mesa. I was gonna say Mesa, so I'm glad that you're here. So, okay. Is Mesa. your hometown? Do you know these people? Oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Candace, like, not a no, fan of the listenership. Do envelope. I know these people? No, their envelopes had Tucson, which is the U of A territory. Okay. And Mesa is in the ASU territory. Gotcha. And this we're is, an ASU family. I get okay, it. Okay. This is like a rivalry. This is, yeah, rivalry. My sister went to U of A and betrayed us all, but that's another story. A so wild you, cat in the family. You should go to this wedding just to spit in their face. Right. We'll send you as our, <laughs> as our tribute. Just um, kidding. Sorry. <laughs> listen, they did include you in the note. Yes, you are invited. Hi, Candace, Jorge, and J and J. Jorge. It's J and J and J. J and Candace. <laughs> and Candace. <laughs> feather, feather. My friend showed me you up and J train a few years ago. I never looked back. Caleb and I love the pod and discussing our takes to all the interesting topics you bring up. We are currently medium distance, uh, uh, hour and a half drive. Uh, and we are currently medium distance, like not long distance, oh, medium distance. Oh, the relationship. I think one of them lives in the Mesa area. The other one lives in Tucson because that is about I like a two you. hour drive away. Okay, this makes sense. And that love makes sense. to a listen. Medium, they should people more people should use that medium distance. I think medium distance is like good. Yeah, I, I'm with yeah. you like that because it does. It is a layer of like we got to make an effort. Yeah. yeah, and and we have to make an effort that you can make. Like I would call like Hoboken to like Upper East Side medium distance relationship. I would too. I would too. Suburbs to the city, that's a medium, medium distance, distance relationship. Yeah. Yeah. If there's no flight, it can be medium distance. Um and love to listen while we travel to each other. Thank you all uh, for all that you do. You've opened up our communication with each other and make our lives better. Aww. I have also showed my sister over sharing and baby steps has really helped her. Please know that you are valued and make the world. Oh my God, I'm going to start crying. So make the world a better with all that you do. Jared, if you want to come back and didn't scare and we didn't scare you away from Arizona, we went to your show a few months ago. We would be honored to have you and Jordana in Arizona with love, uh, Rachel. So this is so sweet. Lovely, lovely letter. Thank a you. A you-up success story. We got a lot of weddings this year that we're a not going to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's our episode. We did it. We did it. Proud of us. We'll be back next week. Bye. Boom. 
The You Up Podcast is produced by Jorge Morales Pico, Sean Kilby, and Candice Maniga. Editing by Jorge Morales Pico and Shannon Sassone. Social media by Candice Maniga. Guest booking by Ali Friedlander. Be sure to follow at you.up.podcast on Instagram and send us your emails to uup at betches.com. Betches.